and that Hosea would know your anointing and your authority upon him. And Lord, give us ears to hear what you have to say to us now, we pray, for we ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 technology yeah good morning. good morning it's always good to be in God's house David lamented when he couldn't go to the to God's house and when he was able to go he says I'm, I'm glad I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord aren't you glad you are here today yes. David was glad I am glad we are glad to be in God's house because God is here he said, where two or three are gathered, I will be there. He always keeps his promise. So he's here. It can be interesting when you get two people go to an event together, like a football match, to go and watch a film. They come back and they give a report. You look at both reports and you say, did these two people go to the same place? <laughs> it is so, so different. From time to time, we get a news item like the chancellor gives his budget <coughs> uh, speech in the House of Commons. You read the Guardian, one spill. You read the, the Telegraph and you say, talking about the same thing? <laughs> it can be true when we encounter Jesus Christ. This morning I want to talk about a life-changing event at the cross. I want to talk about two thieves, very similar background, an encounter with Jesus at the end of that encounter, one went to paradise and the other one did not. Both are thieves, very similar. Both knew about Jesus Christ. Both were on the cross next to Jesus Christ for some hours. But yet at the end of it, it was a different ending. If you've got your Bible, please, let's open to Luke chapter 23. Sorry, that was very tiny. You, you read your own Bible. Can't read that. Nick, you can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> so open your own Bible. I'm trying to fit it into one. Luke 23, 32 to 43. It says, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Picture the scene. Jesus Christ 
two thieves on the cross and the crowd. You know, wherever Jesus is, he draws men and women to him. Even at crucifixion. Crucifixion was nothing new. The Romans have been practicing it all the time. It's something you will see in the Roman Empire everywhere you went. But today, it is Jesus Christ being crucified. And the crowd wanted to see it. Because this is unique. This is very, very different. And among the people around were the two thieves who were very close to Jesus. At the beginning, they were hurling insults at Jesus, both of them. The thief on the right and the one on the left as well. They join the crowd. You know, it can be dangerous, the crowd. You can easily find yourself following exactly what the crowd is doing, even if you don't. And that is why we've been called, come out from among the crowd. That is why we've been advised, do not let yourself be conformed to the things of this world. This world is passing. Let us not be conformed to it. While all this was happening, Jesus was focused on our salvation, on your salvation and my salvation. The thieves were focused on self-preservation. They were focused on earthly things. The thief on the left wanted his life back. Save yourself and save me so that I can go back to earth. Because with crucifixion, I will soon die. But I want to go back. We have been asked to go forward, not go back. If you put your hands to the plow, don't go back. Go forward. Don't go back to the old things. Look for the new things. The Lord said, behold, I am doing a new thing all of the time. Can you not perceive it? Because it is there for you to see. You see, God has made us so that we are able to receive things of God, everyone, all of the time. That's why it says in Romans, what can be known about God has been revealed to all of mankind before Christ and after Christ so that nobody has an excuse. There is a receptor in us that is ready to receive the word of God. But this thief, he wants to go back he said, save yourself and save us. He was looking for a personal rescue, a private Jesus Christ you can call upon at a time of crisis. And that can be what we are sometimes. Yeah, my own private pocket-sized Jesus Christ. My own laptop-type Jesus Christ. It is crisis. Save me so that I can go back to my old ways. He says, I've got new ways. Why don't you want to try that? As usual, there was a crowd as well. They love a miracle. Maybe something will happen. This is Jesus, the great prophet. It wasn't long ago that he raised Lazarus. Who knows what may happen today? So they were baying and shouting and insulting and abusing him. Come down from the cross. Because we know that you can do that. But Jesus' agenda on this occasion is different. The crowd, like today, looking for entertainment. The thief on the cross was looking for how he can extend his life here on earth. But this is what Jesus said. Do not lay treasures for yourself here on earth, but in heaven, because that is, what you are, well, that is where you are going. We are only here temporarily. We are going somewhere where we shall be permanently. Yes, we are here to prepare for our permanent residence. So he says, I go to prepare a place for you because I love you so much, I want to bring you. Don't set your heart here. Set your heart in heaven. So he says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek that first. I know you are here, but seek me first, and the things that you need here, I will supply you. Know the things of the earth all of the time. Yes, you are here. You need food. You need clothing. I will supply those things. 
but seek me first. The thief on the left side wanted earth, but not a relationship with Jesus Christ. Just save me, save yourself, save me, and we'll be okay. No, Jesus wants a relationship with you, which is all of his creation. That is why he came. Set your mind on things that are above. They are the things that last. The things here will soon pass away. Earth is temporary and is passing away. Heaven is our home. We are strangers. We are sojourners here. Let us set our hearts on those on heaven. Even on the cross, our Lord, he, said, Jesus, he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. You see, his name is what? Jesus. Every opportunity he is saving. Saving people. I say sometimes we get too familiar with the name Jesus. Why don't you say, oh, yesterday I was praying to save you. People say, what? Save you. Yeah, Jesus, that's his name. We get used to Jesus, Jesus, that we forget that it means Savior. So wherever he is, whether he's on the cross, anywhere he is, he's there to do what it takes to save you. Can you imagine being nailed to the cross, the pain of it? There, losing your life, ebbing away. But still, he is interested in your salvation, even at the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. You know, he said, true fishers of men, he said, I will make you fishers of men. And he showed that example on the cross. Not only fishers of men, but forgiving at the cross. Forgiving the soldiers right in front of you who just nailed you to the cross. Father, forgive them. What an example. Can you do that? Can I do that? Can I forgive someone who is just kicking me, kicking me, needling me? Can I do that? But he asked me to do that. He said, not just forgive, but pray for them. Not just pray for them, bless them. Then you will be true sons of your father. And he showed that with nails in his hand, with nails in his feet, with people mocking and, and joking and saying all of those. He said, Father, forgive them as he was looking at them. What an example to follow. That is our Lord. He lost you so much. He sacrificed so much for you. He is praying for you. He is interceding for you at all times. The thief on the right hand side, I think eventually got it. You can't be near Jesus and not feel something. After he was risen from the dead, and the two disciples were going down to Emmaus, and he joined them, and he explained the scripture to them, until when he break, uh, broke bread, and they knew him. What did they say? Didn't our hearts burn within us? You can't be with Jesus and not feel a reaction. So there is this thief on the right, and the one on the left as well. You are physically very near the savior of the world, where this monumentous event is taking place, the salvation of mankind. You are bound to see something. But you know, God has given us free will. We have to open the windows of our heart for him to come in. He is giving you that free will. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone opens, it is your free will to open. It is the free will of the thief on the, on the cross to open his eyes to see what is happening at the time of crucifixion. Even the soldier, one of the soldiers said, surely this man is the son of God. Because of what was happening around. The prayer to the father, Elohim, Elohim, why have you forsaken me? Mother, behold your, your, your son. All of those things that were happening. If you are near Jesus, you will know it. You will feel it. It takes an active act to stop him. We need to see our consciences to stop the word of God, to stop the spirit of God, to stop an experience with Jesus Christ because he wants you to know him. And he said, this is eternal life, to know Jesus Christ, to know God, and to know Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. He wants you to know him, whatever the circumstances. 
through faith and grace, this thief got his salvation. Let's just have a look at what Peter has to say in 2 Peter 3.19. He said, the Lord is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish or to come to repentance. There is nobody on earth that God wants to go to hell, not one person. He is patient. He wants all of us to be with him. He loves us so much. He loves his creation. He has come to redeem all of his creation, which is giving you the free will to open your heart to receive him. We know this verse very well, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says similar. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Enough has been going on at the time of crucifixion, I believe, for this thief to see, surely this must be the Son of God. Surely this is the Messiah. It is time for me to take my chance. Jesus' ministry was only three and a half years. A lot happened in that time. John said, if everything that Jesus Christ did were to be written, there would not be enough books in the whole world to contain it in just three and a half years. So it would take a lot not to know about Jesus Christ. Every day something is happening. The news is traveling. And as I say, it's not long ago that Lazarus was raised from the dead. After he had died four days and his body was thinking. Surely everybody will know about that in Jerusalem. And all the things that he did in three and a half years, so much work. And now that this thief is beginning to open his heart, he is beginning to see with his eyes and beginning to understand with his heart as well. Just as we are, there is so much. Whether you have heard about Jesus Christ or not, God says there is enough evidence in this world for you to know me. So that no man has an excuse, Romans chapter 1. There is enough for everyone to know that God exists. Everyone. And we, the privileged, who call upon the name of Jesus Christ, we know the word, we have the words of life. We have Christ. We have eternal life. How far can we go? It cannot be measured. He does not set a boundary. He does not set a limit to how far you can go with him. There isn't. He doesn't give you a ration of his spirit or of his word or of his love or of himself. He gives you everything. It's up to us to receive how much we can receive. How generous a God is that? No wonder this began, began to, as he opened up, he was beginning to see more and more and more. The thief on the right, he couldn't do anything. He was nailed to the cross, just like Jesus Christ. He couldn't go anywhere. He couldn't go and do any good works for Jesus. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Can you breathe? You can do something worthwhile in the kingdom of God by praising the Lord. That's all. If you have breath, you have used, you can do something for your God. Now he had breath, he has a tongue, and he was going to use it. What does he do first? He rebukes his mate. Aren't you afraid of God? Can you just see how things are beginning to change around? Aren't you afraid of God to be speaking like that to this man? He began to defend Jesus Christ. This man has done nothing wrong. This man has done nothing wrong. He is defending Jesus Christ. 
Several hours ago, no one stood up for Jesus. In Pontius Pilate's palace, nobody stood up for him. Either you keep quiet or you are shouting, crucify him. Even his disciples at all say, yeah, we'll go to the end of the, the world with you. Wherever you go, master, we will go with you. All deserted him. The leader, Peter, disowned him three times. So I want you to begin to think now of this thief on the cross, now defending and say, this man has done nothing wrong. All the crowd that were there were mocking and saying, you did this, you save others, save yourself. He's made the thief on the left side say, save yourself and save me. But this one man among the crowd is saying, this man is innocent. He went against the crowd. Even though he was dying, to you and me, it would seem he had nothing to gain. But he was there to defend Jesus. Do you defend Jesus? Do you say, no, he is the son of God? Do you say he is savior? Do you say, tell your friend, yesterday I was speaking to savior. I was speaking to my healer yesterday. Who is that? Where does he work? No, I mean Jesus. He is my healer. I was speaking to my banner yesterday. Who is that? Jesus. He is my banner. I was speaking to my peace yesterday. Who is that? Jesus, he's my peace. All the names, let's use them to raise the profile and the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tell people we are the ones to lift up the name of Jesus Christ here in Southport. That is what we are here for. We have the light of Christ. We have the image of Christ. We have in him in us. He is in us. Let us show the whole world that we are of Christ and he is ours. A thief doing that, can you imagine? It blew my mind. When a thief said, this man is innocent, his words are kind of prophetic. The sinless Christ, the righteous Christ, the Lamb of God, the only one fit enough to save the world. He has to be sinless. And a thief is not saying that at the cross because of what he has seen, because what has come back to his memory, I believe. And you know what he did next? He did one thing we are very bad at doing. He told himself the truth. He told the other thief, well, we are getting what we deserve. When was the last time you said, I got what I deserve? No, it's somebody's fault. <laughs> if I came from a different background, it won't be like that. If I have a degree, it won't be like that, you know. If I was a man, if I was a woman, something else we blame, we never take responsibility. With the earshot of Jesus Christ, he said, I am getting what I deserve. We don't do that very well. But he confessed his sins before our Lord. What do you think is going through Jesus' mind? This man is innocent. He has done nothing wrong. I have done something wrong. I can feel, I believe Jesus was warming up to him. He's not said anything yet. But I can just see Jesus warming up to him. And for me, this is the biggest one, number six. He declares Jesus to be a king with a kingdom. What do I mean? He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. You have to be a king to have a kingdom. You can't be a king. He's been written king of the Jews here on this earth as a mockery. But he's talking of another kingdom, not this one here. Wow. He is looking to the future. These are the things the likes of Abraham were commended for. They were giving promises that they never received, but they said, the Bible said they were looking forward to a kingdom. They were looking forward to a future. This man is looking forward to a future. He is looking forward to a kingdom. Are you looking forward to a kingdom? Are you ready for a kingdom? You are children of the kingdom. Am I ready? Are we ready? 
I'm actually into being things that are not as though they are. How come he's talking about a kingdom for Jesus Christ? But he is. What can be known about God is revealed to all mankind. He's opened his heart, he's opened his eyes, and he can see. And as I said, even the soldier down there said, surely this man is the son of God. Those who opened their eyes to see saw and testified that surely this man is the son of God. This thief said, surely this man has a kingdom. And you know what? He was smart. I want to be a part of it. So do you. I want to be a part of it. He went to the right man, Jesus Christ, I want to be part of your kingdom. In hours, all will be dead. But he is looking with eyes of faith to a kingdom that he knew very little about. But he saw Jesus, he knew Jesus, he felt Jesus, and he said, this is the right man that will take me to beyond. I was concerned, I want to go back to my, my, my old life, save yourself, save me so I can go back to my old life. This one said, no, I want to go forward to the new life. Isn't it great that we have a guarantee, not a hope, we have a guarantee of a new life in Jesus Christ. Everyone who calls on the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. It's not maybe, no, he gives us guarantee. No one else can give a guarantee. Some of the religions out there say, well, if you get 51%, you go to heaven. No, it's guaranteed by calling on the name of Jesus Christ. How privileged are we to have a guarantee in the world? What can you guarantee in this world today? But we can guarantee our salvation by calling on the name of Jesus Christ. He therefore made a bold request Wow, I think it would have been music to the ears of Jesus Christ. Today, you will be with me in paradise. He, Jesus puts it in a way that is unique to him. Verily, verily, I say to you. He's the only one who speaks like that. Truly, truly, I speak to you. I mean, it's guaranteed. Verily, verily, you call on the name of Jesus Christ. Verily, verily, you will be with him. And he will be with you everywhere and anywhere if you call on his name. Truly, truly, verily, verily, he will be with you in paradise. You see, this was the last man Jesus had an intimate conversation with before he died. He was the last companion on earth, a robber, a criminal. What did they say of him? Jesus, a friend of sinners. Even right to the end, end of sinners. That is why we have hope. We are not good enough in ourselves. But that is why we have hope. When we are, we are not yet Christians, he died for us. He didn't wait for you to, you know, get a little bit better by 30%. No. You are never good enough. I was never good enough when he died for me. He gave his life fully, not a part of it, for me, a friend of sinners. When I was researching this, somebody would say, you know, looking at this, say, well, when he got to heaven again, that was the first person he saw because he said, today you will be with me in paradise. So when Jesus got into paradise, here was the thief. Well, it's just a story. But he was with him in paradise. There's a story that goes like this. It's a story that a man dreamt that he died and went to heaven. And when you go to heaven, you go to the gates of heaven, and they say, well, there are categories. So he was waiting for his category to get into heaven. One of the categories were Southport people. It's your turn now. Come on in. <laughs> Where are the Nigerians? It's your turn now. Come on in. The first category came. 
There was dancing, there was music, there was cheering and everything. It was very lively. Hallelujah. He asked the man at the gate, who are those? He said, they are the prophets. Oh, oh. <laughs> I wasn't a prophet on earth. Am I going to get in at all? He was waiting his turn. Another group came, dancing, cheering, hallelujah, praise God. He asked, who are those? He said, they are the apostles. Apostles? Goodness me, will I be good enough to get in? After that came branch, uh, another group waving branches and banners and everything, all dressed in white. He said, who are those? Those are the martyrs. They all died for Christ. Oh, I wasn't even persecuted for Christ when I was alive. When will I get in? And then soon he began to hear voices of multitudes coming in. Multi loud voices, people just walking, coming in, lots and lots of them. He began to see people he knew. He said, that's Rahab. Yeah, that's Rahab. He was a prostitute. What's he doing here? He said, that's David. Yeah. Well, he engineered the death of Uriah. What's he doing here? That's Paul of Tarsus. He killed Christians. How can he get in here? That's the thief on the cross. He was a robber. But then in their midst was Jesus Christ. He said, how can they get in? He said, well, this is your category. You better get in now. Jesus said, these are the ones saved by grace. That is you and I. Not the prophets, not the apostles, not the martyrs, but these are the ones saved by grace. When they got into heaven, well, there was pandemonium. The angels were rejoicing. There was music. There was hallelujahs everywhere. You see, every time you are saved, every time a sinner repents, the angels in heaven rejoice. So when all of this multitude came in saved by grace, wow, think about the, think about the music, think about the singing, think about the praising. That is you, that is I. That is how precious you are. Jesus was in their midst. The angels were singing. That is how precious he will stoop to the level of the thief on the cross to save him because we are all precious in the sight of our Lord. And even today, according to Hebrews 7.25, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always, always lives to intercede for you and for I. Forever is interceding for you. And for me. And Jesus says, John 6 37, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. No, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. You are never too bad for Jesus Christ. The last man he was talking to was a robber. We wouldn't want to associate with him. But Jesus was his friend. He's a friend of sinners like you and like me. And this, I like this promise. Jesus says, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. I like the King James Version. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good will, his good will to give you the kingdom. How can that be? He said, on the last day, we shall be like Jesus Christ. He said we shall be joint heirs. I share, you share with Jesus Christ in his kingdom. Joint. You be like him. But that is how much he loves you. We are going to be like him. We are going to be heirs of the kingdom with him. You see, this is not unique. This is what he does all the time. Zacchaeus was just going to go out and see whether I can see Jesus. I just want to see the man. What happened? Salvation came to his house. 
Today, salvation has come to this man, for he is a son of Abraham as well. He just went out to see. Jesus was there to offer his salvation. So Paul of Tarsus was going to do what he did very well, bring Christians in. He met with Jesus Christ, and the rest is history. Anyone can be saved. The woman at the well went quietly at a quiet hour just to fetch water. At the end of it, she had words that many were wanting to hear. I am the Messiah, and you are talking to me. She just went to fetch water. But that's how much he loves you and he loves me, that he wants to reveal himself to you. All we need to do is to open the window of our heart, and he will come in. He went across the lake of Galilee. A man full of demons came running to him. Soon after, he was set free. He said, Jesus, I want to follow. He said, no, go back to Decapolis and tell your people there how good God has been to you. How good has God has been to you? How good has he been? Oh, very good to me. I am alive. I am here with you. He is here with me. I have a, a certainty because I believe in Jesus Christ. So have you. He is a friend of sinners. Whether you are full of demons, whether you are trying to hide, whether you just go out for a walk to see who he looks like, he wants to meet with you because he loves you. You are his creation. He died for you and wants to redeem you. And if you've messed up, sometimes you say, well, I've blown it. That's it. That's me done. You can be restored. Just like Peter, he restored him. After his three times, I don't know this man, he was swearing, I don't know him. But he was restored. The Lord gives another chance because he loves us. Whoever believes in Jesus can have a life, a life-changing experience as you encounter him. He wants to meet He's your friend. He's done everything. He's going to a place because he wants you to be with him, and that is guaranteed. I pray that you meet with him today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen.